yeah, those are key things to avoid. It's like bright colors straight out of the jar, too thick. You want to water everything down. You want to get some complexity of color. The same kind of thing where you want to get complexity, uh, but you don't want to muddle it. Uh, I brought something from home just to show you guys what uh, things, what kind of the look I'm striving for. So I do a lot of texture on my sculptures and I want to really highlight that texture and I want to get a naturalistic look and I want the color to work with the form. I don't want it to fight the form. Like when you paint brush strokes on it, it just kind of fights it. You want to highlight what's there. That's the main goal. I use underglaze sometimes, a ceramic material, and that behaves a little bit differently, uh, but I do a similar kind of process. I've found that with the underglazes, I can put the color on and then I'll do more staining over the top. With the paint, I found that um, it works best to put a darker tone down first, then put some color on, and then stain over the top of that. So that's kind of what I'm gonna try and do. You wanna, you wanna think about the look that you're going for, like decide on your color scheme. And I'm gonna go with this guy here. It's, this is a black bullhead catfish. So it's got that brown tone with some greens in it, and then that white belly, which is pretty common. And there's kind of areas that are differentiated, but there is not a lot of like hard lines. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just stain the whole thing. I'm gonna make sure I don't mess up my pictures. I got tons of brushes. This is about half water, half black. And you know what, I wanna warm it up a little bit. Just give it kind of a warm undertone. I don't want it to be too cool. Too cool for school of fish. Thank you. I got one in front of here. It was bad, it was bad. Okay. And I keep plenty of paper towels handy. Don't wanna, don't wanna remix my red, so I'll just clean off this brush if that's not enough red. Yeah, that's enough. That just kind of warmed it up. I'm feeling that, that looks good. Sometimes I'll keep a, um, got my bucket of water here, big bucket of water so I can keep uh, rinsing things off. Sometimes I'll keep a spray bottle handy so that I don't overdo it on the paint, I can kind of hit the brakes a little bit before that color really sinks in. You know, which, once you put the color on there, then it's kind of there. Uh, you can cover it up, but it takes, you know, a little bit to dry, so you can kind of tone it down if you need to. So I'm ready to go, deep breaths. Because once I start going, I don't want to stop, especially that first layer. You guys ready for this? Let's do it, let's do it. Oh, that's dark, that's really dark. Hit the brakes. Hit the brakes. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's gonna work. So yeah, that was like half water, half paint. That might have been a little too thick. This is just water in here. But if I stop, I might get some areas where there's like a kind of a border, kind of an edge, like right there, that kind of happened. Yeah, there we go. It's still wet enough. Keep it moving, bless you. Like I'll probably get some of that on the back side. That's okay. People won't pay as much attention there, but I do need to resolve it from all angles of view. You might notice I got these lovely whiskers going on, and that is uh, wire with magic sculpt over the top. I left holes in there, and then I glued the wire in, and then I put magic sculpt over the top of them to give them some shape. And I, since I had the magic sculpt handy, any little cracks and stuff, I used, I used the magic sculpt to um, fill them in. So there's a lot of materials you can use. The spackle's good, uh, magic sculpt's good. The plaster's okay. The um, hydrocals is better than like, you know, like pottery plaster or whatever. So you can use that. And we get in all the little crevasses. side here. I can just kind of hold it and work it. Oh yeah, I'm seeing that warm tone in there. That's good. But you just don't want to go too thick initially. Get all 
from there. The whole back. So just kind of the underpainting, sort of like Tom was saying. You know, if you if you don't get as true of colors, it's nicer to see that black coming through than some white. It's not going to fight your um, your colors as much. It's going to darken them, but probably get truer colors that way. You see the magic sculpt it's got a little bit of porosity to it but not much it's not soaking it in as much as i'd like but that's okay as i build up the layers of color on there it'll start to really take it i'll start to kind of blend in a little more and so the water not only makes it so that you're not like clogging up all the pores but it also helps the paint to really move if you want it to just naturally move around the piece and kind of highlight the texture starting a first step in bringing out that texture Now, down. I'm going to start thinking about some of those kind of rings around. Raw Sienna, there we go. Let's try some of that. And I'm going to get, make sure my brush is clean. And then I'll get a little bit of that. Someone kind of tainted it there. I'll, whatever, I'll take that tainted chunk. Take one for the team. And then got my cup here. Get a little water in there. A bit. So I got the brown, and I'm going to throw just like a little bit of green in there. We're walking, a, we're walking a thin line here with like just getting it real funky. Do you like mixing your colors as you go along or pre-mixing everything on Uh a little of both. I I tend to mix them as I go along more because color is so relative. So I'm always like thinking about the color relationships. So this is a little light, but it's gonna go on thin, and I think that's gonna sitting on that black, it's gonna should give me the color I want. If not, then we'll just keep, keep going. Okay, let's see. So it kind of goes along the body, wraps down the belly just a little bit. It's a little thick. Yeah, there we go. A little water here. It'll tend to be darker when it's wet. Let's see. It's just going to go all the way up. I'm going to just go all the way up the body there. While it's still wet down here, I'm going to blend it. A little wet blending. And you really, if you want to blend it, you got to get after it quickly because it is going to dry and then it won't cooperate, it won't move anymore. So the tail, I'm going to just kind of come up to the edge of the tail. I'm not going to worry about being too neat the head. Yeah, it really does kind of come all the way down the head. Ooh, yeah, already there's some nice complexity starting to happen here. And those whiskers, yeah, they're going to be kind of brown, so I want to cover those whiskers for sure. Hmm. Maybe I didn't get enough dark undertone on those whiskers. I'll just take a little more tweaking later. But right now I want to get some color on them. Don't ignore the whiskers. So as I, so I'm being kind of quick at this point. But as I get deeper into the process, I'll start to slow down and be a little more careful, make little adjustments. Right now I'm just trying to like get some area covered. Always, always get the back of your piece, even if you feel like whatever, no one's going to see it. They're going to see it. And then you're going to do a layer. You're going to do that layer. And then you're going to move on to something else. And then you're going to realize you didn't get the back. And then you're going to go, oh, what color did I use? I need to mix that again. And then, oh, then you're just working backwards. So always try and be thorough and kind of get the whole thing. Maybe color being relative with this dark, dark color on the belly, maybe I need to start staining it with something lighter first off, like kind of an undertone. And maybe I'll just use like some straight brown and get like a layer of just that straight brown. No, maybe the brown with like a little bit of white in it. And then I'll work uh, the white on top of that because brown and green on black is much different than white on black. So I wanna give it kind of more of a background. So let's get some brown here. A little bit of red, good, that's all I needed. White, a little bit of red. 
I mean, the, that ochre color has a nice kind of earthiness to it anyway. But I always like things a little, a little complex, a little more complex. I just don't want it to look like a you know plastic toy. I want it to look like a sophisticated creature. That's going to come all the way up the tail. And I want to blend that, get some water on my brush, try to blend that while it's wet. And that's kind of the trip, it like comes up and around right there. If it does that, then I can't have any lines happen. So I'm going to blend that with a smaller brush. Blendy, blendy, blend. Blend that in a little bit. And then it's here. I'm going to keep that moving before it dries. And comes all the way up the gills, around there a little bit. And if it bends in a little lighter, I like other things. I like big things. And then I'll get up, get the belly. And you don't want to go too thick. You're just trying to lighten what's there. You don't want it to get too light in the crevices. You're just trying to lighten what's already there. Okay, fins. Did I get you guys? Did I get all of you fins? Meh. Not quite. Don't have to be super neat. Just blend that a little bit. And now I'm gonna get my white, but I want this to be a bit drier. There we go. It's got some horsepower. Still caffeinated. Dries pretty quick. But this way, I'm not gonna. I want a kind of a cleaner white. I don't want to get much color mixed into it. Are those things? No. Okay, I'm just gonna worry about the belly with this and not so much the um, the fins. Okay. Now, how much time do you often take to paint the whole? To paint the whole piece. Like one by myself, at least a few hours. I'd say at least, at least three hours. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna take you. I think you could do it in a day. In you could do it in a class period if you jump into it. But you want to give yourself enough time to kind of, to make adjustments to kind of troubleshoot a little bit. Because, yeah, you don't want to rush this process. You've worked so hard to make these things. You want to really focus on highlighting what's there, making it look sophisticated, resolved. What happens if you get too much paint on the piece? Uh, then you kind of clog the pores. There's not like a whole lot you could do. I mean, you can keep layering, trying to layer. You can still layer on top, but you just have to use drier and drier paint because there's just less and less opacity. What do you think? Oh goodness. But that's a that's a somewhat overkill kind of thing. That is very careful, especially with thin touch because you can break those off. I'm gonna get bold here. I'm gonna feel some some I'll just use a paper towel. I'll just do that. Okay. So I'm gonna try usually I'll wait to, more till the end to do this, but this is gonna be fun. Let's do it now. I'm gonna do a little bit of like I'll do dry brushing or sponging. So I'll get a sponge with a nice kind of flat edge on it. And I'll get some straight paint on there. And then I'm gonna wipe. I'm gonna wipe a lot of it off, and kind of move it around the sponge so it's kind of evenly distributed, but it's not too thick. And then this is nice and dry. Now let's see. Ooh, that's a little thick. So we can just kind of blend it out. How are we doing? Yeah, it's still a little spotty. You know what? Maybe it's, maybe I don't like that edge. It's kind of a softer, rounder part right there. All right, let's just try it right here. Yeah, it's really evenly distributed is the key, and nice and light. 
talking about now. Oh yeah, there it is. And that really kind of grabs the high points. How high up does it go? I'm going a little high, don't go too high. Don't go too high. But that's okay, I can kind of work it back. And work it back down later. I want to try and keep it sort of consolidated. It's going to go up all the way up the hill there. It's kind of hard to work around those fins, but that's okay. Just got to be careful. Yeah, this is something I might spend more time on and just really make sure that it goes on evenly. And I try to avoid the fins a little bit more. But yeah, I don't mind a little, a little stalking. It's a little grimy, especially catfish. They're like bottom feeders down there. And go back to my same little pile, but I think it's mostly dry. Let's get a little bit more here. side of the gill a little bit there. So you can get that effect with a sponge. You can also do it with a brush, like something that's got medium stiffness and like can flat tips on it. So maybe you need to get more like into the nooks and crannies and get a little bit more kind of refined, a little bit more of a refined touch on there. Get all the way up to the edge of the fins a little bit better. You just kind of start off real careful when you're dry brushing, and eventually it'll thin out enough to where you can just kind of attack it and just get it all over. There we go. That's like kind of stepping it up, stepping up the white, making it a little bit more opaque. And is there more white somewhere? Yeah, this fin looks like extra white. Maybe just while I'm at it, I'll give it a little. Oh yeah, it's so satisfying when it just kind of pops like that. And it's going to be a little pinky in those gills, so let's go for more white. Do I even need white? I could go super, maybe I'll just try the red, super duper light. You know, I'll, I'll use this brush that's got some residue on it, and that should be good. Thank you, thank you. I'll get this. Just a little bit of water. And a little bit of, hold on, let me see. I'll just use a new brush, fresh brush, because I'm a responsible person. I'm not going to take everybody's stuff. A little bit of red. Clean my brush. Yeah, because this had a little bit of white on it already. And that's stronger than I want it. Just water it down a little more. So this is going to be really watered down now. Yeah, and it's hard to kind of gauge, you know, the density of your color. Sometimes you just got to kind of play with it until you get it right. You mess it up, whatever. Just don't add, just don't go straight paint. And you'll be all right. You can always kind of work it back. There we go. Just a little bit of, a little bit of red, like fleshiness in there. Oh, yeah. That gives it more life. Probably it's going to especially need some of that, like going right up the gills, like almost like you're looking into the gill a little bit and you see a little, a little bit of that soft tissue in there. Could let that dry a little bit, but let's keep moving. So yeah, some green, there's going to be some green tones and green, it's a good dark green. Maybe, maybe it'll just work because there's all those other colors on there and it'll kind of like hang out with them, get to know them, meld a little bit. Or maybe it'll be overpowering. We'll see what happens. We'll start off, we'll start off light and see how it goes. So about half water, half green. I can tell that's pretty dense. Now it's like, let's go like two thirds water. Let's see. This could be a bad idea. Let's see. That's a little too intense. But let's see. Maybe I'll just go light, and it'll dry, and it'll cooperate. Now, because because it's so much runnier, now it wants to sit in the crevices, which is not terrible. Kind of enhances the texture a little bit more. Yeah, that's too green, but I'm going to just keep working it in there a little bit just to add some more variation, and then I'll mix it with some brown to kind of mellow, mellow it out. Or you know what? It tends to darken when it dries some kind of light spots on the face. I can bring in some light in the face a little bit. Once 
I got a little bit on there, so just kind of work it all over. Got, found some red in there. That's okay. More variation. And I'm definitely going to need some more opaque paint to go over my little patch ups right there. All right, that's dry a little bit. Hmm. What about those lips? Oh yeah, the, the lips are kind of white, at least on that one. And there's kind of a clear delineation. The face is going to be a spot I'm going to need to spend a little more time because it's such a focal point and kind of get some of the subtlety in there. Yeah, I think that green's okay. I can kind of roll with that for now. Let's see, I want to think about the face now. Let's lighten up the face. So I got some white here. And like some white with like the body color that I was using might be nice. I'll just mix a little bit of it right here. And then I'm thinking like kind of on the high points, just kind of blend that in a little bit. I just kind of blend it with my finger. And does that kind of go up the head? Mostly just on the high points, I think. There's a little bit of water in this, but it's kind of drier than what I have been using. And let's just get a little bit of that coming over over the what do you feelers, whiskers? What do you call them? I bet there's a scientific name. Anybody know? No. that a little bit, blend it up the brow. What does the brow do? I can't really see the top of it there. It's like darker in the body and lighter in the head on some of those. So maybe I'll just keep working in some of this. And then I'm thinking like the darkest area is gonna be kind of like right up here along this ridge. So there'll be like lighter areas in the face. a little bit and I'm gonna have to bring some white up onto that lip. Where's my white? There we go. Yeah. Lid back on. Lids back on. Okay. This brush is a little dirty. That's alright. Dry brushing some of that white. Ooh, see here. Maybe I should have got more background color. So remember how I painted that light brown onto the belly over the black to give a lighter background color to the belly? But you see on the lips, I didn't really do that. So that's kind of where you can run into some trouble. It doesn't look terrible, but that contrast on there, it's just too high of contrast. So maybe I'll just keep working the white and then I'll just put a wash over it later and I'll have to kind of keep adjusting it. Both, yeah, both lips are kind of white. And then, yeah, this is going to be kind of light coming up this way. So then, where was the, yeah, so then I, I had this stain. That white's probably going to dry pretty quick. Let's just come over with this watery stuff. I'm kind of muting my dry brushing, but that's okay. a little better right mm -hmm. but I lost some of the highlights that I got from that dry brushing so I'm gonna dry brush some more white on that so that's good Just Ooh, that's dark yeah I think we can roll with that 
There we go. Not too thick. Kind of, maybe I'll just kind of put it on there. Put it down the head. Oh, it's not that dark. And then I'll blend it. Ooh. Yeah, that could be darker for sure. But now, maybe I have this is like an in between tone, and then it'll help work into that's not the right color, the darker tone. But sometimes I like it when I dip in the wrong color because then it's just more complexity. Nope. Thank you. See? I'm gonna do it again. Now that the clay is losing a lot of its porosity, I can, it's staying wet longer and I can push it around a little more. And then, and then, and then, do I need to go even darker? Yes, sir. Yes. I, I want to keep some of that though, so I'm going to just boink. Actually, that can be a really great thing to do is like you mix like a base tone, a tone that is like the predominant color of your piece. You mix it in one cup and then flip. Flip, flip, three, four other cups, and then you're like, okay, here's a redder tone, here's a whiter tone, here's a yellower tone, you mix a little bit in there, and then you know that they're all gonna blend together. In fact, like you got a big surface to cover, then you might have your four, four tones there, and you like dip it here, dip it in that one, dip it in that one, dip it in this one, and then that way you're creating a lot of just variation almost within like one tone. Okay, black. got like some purpleness to it. You're still filming, right? Good. All right. Uh, yeah, that, I think that's pretty good there. Let's do some more kind of detail work, like on the eyes. Does it get darker around the eyes? Sometimes lighter, sometimes darker. Hmm. Hmm. I think darker would be nice, like right in here, around that eye. And then I'm gonna get a smaller brush. Nice. I like how this eye has some white in it, so it really has some more pop. Blend that a little bit more. And it's that shape. I want it to kind of highlight that shape nice and softly. Come up that shape. So I'm staying relatively true to nature, but I'm allowing myself some creative license here. Blend it a little bit more, a little water on the outside, keep it moving before it dries. Touch it up a little bit there. It's going to be dark under the eyes. Might even throw some like blue or something under that eye a little bit might be fun and then 
it'll be white. And then maybe like some green in there. It's just so dark, it almost looks black, but I want it to have a little pizzazz. So take some white. I need that to be dry because I don't want it to bleed all over. I want it to be pretty opaque, but I need a little water just to get it to move. And we'll go on the outside. Oh yeah, that's gonna pop. And then one thing I like to do, you don't always see it, but like having a little bit of pink on the inside of the eyelid is another way to kind of give it some fleshiness sort of like that pink on the gills. It's like that can really suggest like life. Oh yeah, that's popping. Looks a little bit on the table here. That white on the eyeball. water to keep it moving. And then, yeah, I did leave a little catch light on there. I should do that at the end though. Okay, and then a little bit of pinkiness, but what can we mix it into? This is probably a color that we can mix it with. Mix it right on the table here. It's too thick. Got to get a little thinner. A little thinner. Okay, now I'll get just the edge. Just that inside <coughs> edge. Looks a little intense, but it'll dry darker. A little pinkiness around there, just kind of a little life. Make him look a little strung out. He's been up all night, like running from sharks. On the back, too. Okay. A little bit of blue, a little bit of green. water. Yeah, I don't know how realistic that is, but it's more fun. So yeah, it's good to have you know, subtle variety on the piece, but then like having some little focal points can be nice. Get that to dry. And sometimes they're like, there. Sometimes when I'm doing precise stuff, I kind of hold my hand, keep it steadier. Other beautiful, gotcha, gotcha, and then maybe even some yellow on the eyes, not to be the ochre, just to kind of blend it in a little bit. You guys will be slightly less reckless with the with the paints. Of the eye. Oh yeah, there's more. There's more life right there. Soft. 
in a little bit. A little yellow in there. A little bit. I'm gonna like flick some stuff on here real quick. All right, test it over here. Like just some little like spots on there might be kind of fun. Maybe I'll layer a couple different colors to get a couple different kinds of spots. I mean, I didn't do the fins yet, but I'm not gonna make you watch me do that. I'm gonna flick something else. Flick this lighter stuff. Give it a little variation. Uh, I think that's my demo. I think that's it. Yeah, come get a closer look. Check out those eyeballs. Look at some of the detail on there. I'll keep tweaking it, pushing the contrast a little more. I'm gonna finish the fins, touch up those whiskers, but I mean, that's, that's mostly it right there. All right. Okay, my class, go ahead and take a lunch break. some color on the top of the eyes. Oh, you, uh, yeah, you can just paint, you can just paint on top of it. There's no need alcohol. No, you don't need alcohol. You can, you can, you probably want to water it down, you probably want to add water. Uh, and it might not work as well if it's still, if that's still wet. Um, okay. Yeah, then you can put you can just put paint on it. Yeah, you can go back and forth. Um, you can paint back and forth. Uh, bronze over color, color over bronze. You just kind of mess around with it. You can't go too wrong. That's why I like if I give it like messy.